Hey guys, welcome back to the Mentor Nation podcast. It is John Abbas here coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee. Well, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm so excited. I have a great, great episode lined up for you today. So if you're watching this on YouTube, take two seconds, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. <laughs> I'm at 53 three subscribers now on YouTube. So I need to get that number up. Now, given I have not had a YouTube channel for very long, I usually was just publishing audio podcasts for the longest time, but I would love to hit the hundred and the 200 and eventually the million (laughs) subscriber mark. But right now I just want to get to 75. So if you are listening to this, please hit that subscribe button. If you're watching it, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, Okay, with that being said, I hope you guys are ready for an incredible guest today. Rory Douglas is the founder of Aqua Financial, and what I love most about him is he is a complete self-made multimillionaire. He grew up extremely poor. He built his financial practice from scratch using good old-fashioned hard work, focus, and consistency. Now, I felt that this interview would be a great opportunity to just get in the mind of someone who made a fortune from the bottom and just learn and discover what mindsets, habits, what disciplines that he felt were key in getting him to exactly where he is today. Now, Rory doesn't hold back in this interview. And if financial success is a big goal for any of you listening to this episode today, then you're going to get a lot out of this interview. And I really like him. I mean, a lot of his little sayings will stick with you. So just pay attention to those. Make sure you take some notes because I got so much out of interviewing him and I know that you will too. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time. Please help me welcome Rory to the show. All right, Rory, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being on. I'm excited to pick your brain today. Man, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure, a a privilege and a pleasure to talk to you. I'm excited and, um, you know, tag and you're it. Yeah. Well, hey, look, I enjoyed researching you. I freaking love your energy. But today I was thinking about how we can best serve the audience. And I personally think that the best way to do it is to keep today's interview very simple and just packed with value for the audience. Because at the end of the day, here's here's the reality. You are a self-made millionaire. You have built an incredible company. You are an author of several books. You're a life coach. And and most importantly to me, you have dedicated a large part of your life to helping people get out of their own way to achieve really, really big goals. And so I just, I want to focus today's interview on talking about just the mindsets, the habits, the disciplines of a self-made millionaire, somebody that built it themselves and how people the people listening can develop those traits and start having bigger and bigger breakthroughs in their lives. But I can't do that before we get to know who Rory Douglas is. So could you please just share a little bit about your story, how you got started, why you wanted to be an entrepreneur? When did you find your calling and just what led to you becoming successful yourself? Right. You know, I'll say this here before I get started. Um, In today's time, Right now, people, they don't buy books, they don't buy music, they buy you. And um, I wanna actually uh, let the listeners and those who are viewing, I want them to know me. And, um, you know, when I first started off as, as a young child, I was considered most likely not to succeed in high school. Oh, wow. I really let, lay that out there. <laughs> Elementary school, high school, no, most likely not to succeed. I was, um, I got kicked out of every elementary school, every junior high school, and every high school. And mm-hmm. I, was, I was labeled a troubled youth. I was labeled a troubled youth, youth, rather. So when I'm saying I'm labeled, that means it really wasn't me. I was labeled that. That's right. And the reason I was labeled that is simply because I had a disability. And that disability that I had was called dyslexia. I was reading things backwards. So even though I was a very, very bright student, I was an A student and I can articulate everything the teacher was saying. I can repeat it verbatim, word for word. But due to my disability, not being able to read properly, not understanding at that time what was going on, whenever open book came or test came, I would disrupt the class. I would do something to get thrown off the class. So my teachers kept saying, you know what? You're the top of your class, but for some reason just can't get your discipline together. Something's wrong with you. I don't know what's going on. So they would throw me out the class. So it, when they would throw me out the class, 
I always end up in the hallways and with the other kids who had disabilities also too. Right. And um, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change anything because I learned by being around a lot of dysfunction, I learned a lot because even right. in the dysfunction, it didn't take away my identity. I was a leader from the very, very beginning. So those individuals who were in that environment, they looked at me as a, up to me as a leader, but I still had that disability. Right. But I always tell people that you can have a disability, but you don't have to be disabled. So it wasn't until my mom at a very young age, we were going someplace and my mom was in a hurry getting there. And she said, hey, read those instructions. What direction do I need to go? And I was reluctant to read the directions and she insisted, read those directions. And I tried to read them and I was reading things wrong. And that's when my mom realized that there was a problem coming from a large family. My mom worked three jobs. My mom was my mentor. So my mom realized there was a problem. So she took me to the school and talked to the principal and the counselor. And I took some tests and they found out that I had this thing they called dyslexia. And uh, although um, I was challenged with it, I got over my disability through training and, and just through life lessons. So right now uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited because when I did get training, when I did get help with the disability, I uh, went to the top in school. I went to college, I got straight A's, but then college became boring for me <laughs> because as a kid working so many different jobs, I'm talking about sweeping the floor, washing windows and doing all of that. I learned at an early age that your reward comes through service. That's right. And I use that today as my superpower, my, dis, my, my, uh, my, my shortcomings, what, I, what happened in the past, and I also use uh, a spirit of service no matter where I go. So I always tell people opportunity is greater than money. So that's who I am. Um, I actually went from the streets to corporate suites. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's, that's me. <laughs> And uh, I've used the same pattern uh, in life. I, I may start off at the bottom, working in a, in a store. I go from washing the floors to becoming um, a department head, from becoming a department head to the manager. It just go to the top of the food chain. So I took that recipe and I incorporated it in my life. So I always tell people that um, there's never really any losses in life, there's only lessons. So that's who Rory Douglas is. Awesome. I love that. So when did you become an entrepreneur? How old were you when you ventured off from corporate into being an entrepreneur for the first time? I became an entrepreneur when I realized that I could walk into a grocery store and buy a sucker for a few pennies and then go sell the sucker for a dime. That was the beginning of me becoming an entrepreneur, knowing that. Got it. And uh, when I basically uh, worked so many different jobs, but I worked those jobs to help my mom. Yep. But I've always had the entrepreneur spirit inside of me. And I've always realized that it takes hard work and determination to be an effective entrepreneur. I always tell people that if you're not willing on working 16 hours a day, you're not an entrepreneur. You are a entrepreneur. I made up that word. You're a entrepreneur. So I've always been an entrepreneur, but it started for me. Uh, when I was about uh, 19 years old. At okay. 19, I basically became a part of uh, some network marketing company. And um, that was called Amway. I remember it. Yeah, Amway. And uh, I got involved with Amway and, and, and really shot it really, really fast. I was this young guy just shooting it really, really fast. And, um, but one thing about me, I've, I've always got really, really bored. Bored, rather. Things get, uh, got bored very easily. Yep. which means if I get involved with something and uh, if, if my heart is not in it, it's not for me. So uh, that's, that's exactly where I am. So I believe that as, from an entrepreneur standpoint, uh, your passion is going to lead you to your purpose. And I think a lot of people, what we do is we're entrepreneurs, but what we do is we forget about our passion and you got to find passion in what you're doing. Once you find passion in what you're doing, it'll lead you to your purpose. So how do you know, and this is a question that I know a lot of people ask, like, how do you know that something is your passion? And I know there's a lot of formulas out there. There's a lot of different philosophies on that, you know, focus on an intersection between what you enjoy doing and what you're naturally good at and an intersection with what the market wants. But like, what is your take? Like, how did you discover what your passion was? And is it something, because I'm, you coach a lot of people, right? So I'm sure one of the 
most important things that you have to sit down with each person you coach is help them get to that point? Like, do you have a process for that? Yes, I do. My process is I think that everybody knows not necessarily with where their passion lies, but everybody knows that they do have passion, which That's means right. uh, what I do with most people, I, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask someone, I'll say, hey, if you could be right now, if you could be doing what you want to do right now, despite of what you're doing now, if you, could, if you could just tell me in a few words, what would you be doing if you could? And mm-hmm. people, they don't even hesitate. They don't even think about it. They don't even look to the left or the right. Oh, I would be doing this. I would be doing this. I would be doing this. And then I would say, well, why aren't you doing it? And that's when those barriers come up. That's right. That's and I exactly think the right. barriers are the things that bury your passion. The barriers are the things that bury your purpose. So once you, uh, once you talk to people and, they, and they, they give you their imagination where they want to be, I always tell people your dreams are not a figment of your imagination. It's just showing you glimpses of your future. So when people show me their heart and their passion and their dream, that's how I help them to identify their passion. Now, you may have to go through a few things to really identify where that passion is. Right. And I think that that's the process. The process is, is basically taking the things that you dream about, taking the things that you desire to do and actually venturing. And once you do those things, you'll find the thing that you like. It's just like a, a buffet. You know, we go to a buffet and we pretty much go through the buffet and we find something we really like. And then once we find something we really like, we go back to the buffet for that. So that's what it's all about. Life is a buffet. You do a few things. You find what you really look at, like. You find what you're good at. And that's exactly how you propel. And that's how you win. I love that. I need you to say what you said earlier one more time. You said that your dreams are not a figment of your imagination, but a glimpse of your future. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. You're just showing, that's you, good. showing you glimpses of your future. It's showing you glimpses, but the bottom line is a glimpse is uh, for lunchtime. Yep. And when you're living it, it's for a lifetime. So you got to grab a hold to those those glimpses. You got to grab a hold to that, and you got to really, really make it become a reality. That's why I personally believe that you are the change you want to see. But most people, we grew up in a society where uh, our parents are telling us what they want us to do or what they would like for us to do. So I think most people don't really, really get the, the, their proper DNA when it comes down to their their dream, their passion. We start off that way. And, and that's exactly what happens. You we're taught to go to school, you know, get a good education, get out, get a job. And my definition of job is just over broke. Nothing, nothing personal, but just over broke, which means it's nothing wrong with having a job. But if you have a job and you live in your purpose, Great, you can, you're going to be able to uh, uh, prosper in that area. That's the bottom line. So I don't predicate things on on on, on salary or dollar amount because there's a big difference between wealth and riches. And I think a lot of people have riches, but they don't have wealth. Mm-hmm. I love that, and I love that acronym. We I used to use that acronym a lot: jumping over bills, jumping out of yeah. bed, just a over. Bro- <laughs> <is a> business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I love it, man. I'm a big uh, fan of of. I had an old mentor of mine that because I was obviously in in network marketing for for the better part of a decade, and that's how I made my first real money. But that's more importantly where I learned to be a leader. And where I learned just so many valuable skills and my mentor had, and I mean, I swear he had an acronym for everything, poor, <laughs> passing over opportunities repeatedly, rich, residual income creates happiness. Exactly. Okay. I mean, like it's, I just, I love it. I love it. So <laughs> I, I want to finish up on your story. So when did you have like your first, how old were you when you had your first big financial breakthrough and, and what led to that? Uh, my, my first financial breakthrough was when I realized and recognized how easy it is to actually accumulate money <laughs> and the power of saving. Right. When I was uh, 20 years old, I, I was actually uh, doing three things at one time. And uh, I was actually saving a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So I've realized that um, it's easy to take money, to make money rather, but you have to know exactly what to do with money. So I always tell people, 
whoever controls your money controls you. That's right. And own nothing but control everything. So the bottom line is, is that uh, I knew at an early age, I knew because I always saved and I knew the power of saving, but it wasn't until I began to understand money, like the power of compounding interest and things of that sort. And that's when things started to really, really elevate. So that's why it's so important to know you can have money and, uh, but if you don't have any wealth, then you just have money. And, and, and that happens a lot. I love that. And believe it or not, man, I would love to have you on the podcast again, just to talk about finance. I know that's your background and I would love to hear just your thoughts and strategies on multiplying money and investing. Uh, But today I really want to focus because I know a lot of people that are listening to this, you know, before they can go off and become an investor and multiply their money, like they need to get their mind right. You know, they, they need to get the things that I like to call the, the, the mindsets, the disciplines, the habits down so that they can get to a point where they're living in abundance, creating abundance so that they can learn how to multiply and magnify. And so I want to start with mindsets. You know, what are some of the key things that you feel people need to believe in order to achieve at a high level, like some things that maybe from your background, you didn't believe early on because of, you know, either you know, some of your self-limiting beliefs, but what do you think, knowing what you know now, what are some of the beliefs that people need to have in order to achieve at a high level? One of the main things is there's a big difference between being in formation, being in formation. Like when I'm, when I tell somebody to get in formation, get in line Mm -hmm. versus information. And I think that there's a lot of information. We get, we, we told what to do and how to do. Yep then there's information. So I think that uh, one of the things I can tell the listeners and those who are looking, sometimes we got to really first have a a mental enema, which means you got to get the crap out of your head. You got to clear clear your head. Because a lot of us, we have mental fatigue. We're so fatigued because we see so many motivational books, so many quotes, how to do it, the whole nine yards. The first thing you got to do, you got to clear your mind. You got to clear your head. And once you clear your head, you have to really, really uh, take baby steps. I always tell people, uh, praise progress, but not perfection. And you got to really, really break things down, like I said earlier to you, down to the common denominator. Right. And it's really about the little wins. It's not about the big wins. It's about the little wins. You know, winning is a habit and losing is a habit. And people win by small degree and they lose by small degree. So right. it's really about having discipline first. But I'm talking about train discipline. And I'll give people some steps on how to do that. Because awesome. the word confidence is used so, in my opinion, it's used the wrong way every day. Have confidence, have confidence, have confidence. Try to tell the guy who has anxiety to get in front of people and talk to have confidence. That's right. But the thing is, is that confidence truly comes by doing the same thing over and over again. When you do the same thing over and over again, you get better. You don't get bitter. So it's really about dropping the load, clearing your mind, and working your craft, and and living a life of results, getting results. Don't let a day go by without getting the result because it's the little wins that's going to give you the confidence. It's the little wins that's going to create that moment. It's the little wins that's going to build up your self-esteem. It's the little wins that's going to get you ahead. So I I tell all entrepreneurs, stop taking on so much. Make it fun. You got to keep it fun. If it's hard, you're going about it the wrong way. Make it fun. And also... Uh, allow yourself to find your own identity because in today's society everybody's talking but very little people are walking the walk that's right it's a lot of talk and if, if, and the reason i say that is because that's the reason why it's only one this person or one this person or one this person we need multiple people who are, who are people are listening right now there's a leader inside of you there's a leader inside of you but you have to learn how to tell your own story mm. because people don't buy books anymore. They buy you. So it's really about being transparent 
and being you. That's why when I came on, I told you how I got started. I was most likely not to succeed. That's right. You know, but my story is my glory. That's why I went from the streets to corporate suites. So you got to have a story. You got to be hungry. That's that's the that's what I would tell people to take baby steps, get little wins, build your confidence, and consistency is the key to success. Being consistent. Oh, I love that, man. I'll tell you, there was probably one of the biggest breakthroughs I ever had. Piggybacks off of what you just said right there. I was at an event. And there was this incredible speaker who had built this huge eight, nine figure business. And his name was Myron Golden. And he, if you've ever heard of him, he yeah, was giving this speech and he said exactly what he said, just worded differently, differently. And it was a huge breakthrough because up until that point, I would set these crazy goals that I would never achieve. And he said, and this is what he said. And it's so powerful. He said, I want you guys all to know something. The word confidence comes from the Latin word confidere and confidere wow. means to trust oneself, to trust yourself. Mm. And he's like, what happens if you have a friend that lies to you all of the time, every time you're around and they lie to you, well, you stop trusting him. You don't trust him. He's like, when you set goals that you don't achieve, you're basically lying to yourself over and over and over. And that's why you don't trust yourself. And that's why you don't have confidence because you don't trust yourself because you keep setting goals. And he said the same thing. He said, it's the small wins. He's like, start setting goals that you can hit and start hitting them. You'll develop the confidence and your brain subconsciously will get to a point where every time you set a goal, it will automatically expect you to achieve it. And that's how people achieve really, really big goals. And he just turned that whole aim for the stars and land on the moon shit like completely on its head. And I just, I yeah. love that you you said yeah. that, man. And, and, let, and let me let me take it further because I want please, listeners, please. I want listeners to get something. I want to take it further because there's also some layers to that. There's some layers to that. See, here's the thing. I can't compromise that. Um, I am, I'm also a spiritual person because I believe in that energy. And most people don't realize that there's two people lying inside of us, two people. When I say two people, two emotions. You have your, your spirit man and then you have your flesh man. And if you don't recognize those two sides of yourself, then you're gonna really, really, um, you're not gonna be that effective. See, I realize that uh, the, the, the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is weak, which means if, if you don't want anyone to pinch you, you don't want to be hit or punched. So the flesh is supposed to give in to all of that because that's what it's supposed to do. But if you don't exercise your spirit, your flesh is going to take over. Your emotions are going to take over. Your doubt is going to kick in. But the more you exercise your spirit, what I mean by exercising your spirit, exercise you exercise your confidence, exercise your consistency. The more you exercise, the stronger you get. And you can literally be in the gym and you can be a strong individual, but you can't control you. So you're not gonna be an effective entrepreneur until you learn how to put yourself in check. It, see, so many people spend so much time outside of themselves that they lose themselves. So what I've learned as an entrepreneur that you have to learn how to spend time with you because when you really think about it, how much time are you spending with you? You know, it's funny because in life, you're only going to be doing two things. Either you're going to be working to fulfill your own vision or working to fulfill someone else's vision. And when you analyze people, they are spending more time fulfilling someone else's vision and not their own. And that's the reason why they're lacking. That's the reason why they're slacking. So it's really all about building you, building that, 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 that mental muscle and just building you, building you to be able to control, to be able to control your flesh, which means it's tied to your fear. And I always tell people fear just stands for false emotions that appear to be real. It, it's not what you think it is. So you got to break things down to little wins and you got to be consistent as you gain confidence and you'll win. I love that. You know, it's, I was, I was coaching a guy a long time ago. And I said the same thing. I said, you know, fear is just false evidence appearing real. He's like, no, no, no. It's forget everything and run. And I was like, okay. I didn't have anything to say to that, but I was, yeah. I thought it was, it was really funny. So you obviously, you coach a lot of people through these breakthroughs and I can imagine because 
I do the same thing, probably not to the degree that you do, but I know that one of the big things that a lot of people feel stuck is like they, they know their passion or they have an idea, but they're so involved. They have kids, obligations, a career. I mean, they have so many things that the idea of actually making that move, it, it just, it scares them to death. So what advice do you have for somebody that's in that place in their life right now that, that wants to pursue a big dream, but for whatever reason, they've suppressed it for a long time and they don't know what the first step they should be taking is, is it small baby steps? Like what, what would you say to that person? I would say develop a hobby mindset, Mm. a hobby mindset. See, we like our hobbies. What's your hobby? My hobby is golfing. My hobby is putting together cars. My hobby is whatever, whatever it may be. Develop a hobby mindset in the areas of business. A hobby mindset oh. uh, in the areas of business, which That's means good. turn your hobby into your career. Turn your hobby into that, that thing. But the problem is, it's like you, what you said earlier. Uh, we give ourselves so many, um, we give ourselves so many goals that are not really reachable. And, and we, we, we do this on a day-to-day basis. That's and right. then what happens is we set the, the bar, we set the standard, we don't hit it. It kills our confidence, it kills our motivation. And then we, we back down to ground zero. And what I've noticed in life is, is that we already, always are going from somewhere to nowhere, from somewhere to nowhere. It's like uh, stop, start, stop, start. It's like a roller coaster. And you got to really grow up as an entrepreneur. What I mean by grow up in life, wherever we're immature at, that's where we suffer. If I'm immature, my finances, I, I suffer financially. If I'm immature, my marriage or my relationships, I suffer in that area. But once you get matured in that area, you don't suffer. You, you pretty much prosper. You grow. So that's why it's all about having the little wins. That's why it's all about bringing everything down and, and, and starting off where you can get those little victories. And what happens is, you develop a lifestyle of results. You get addicted to results. You, it makes you feel good. You're, you're growing, you're motivated. And that's what it's all about. I think that uh, we got a lot of people that are achieving a false sense of success. They have money, they're not happy. Mm. They're doing things, they're burning inside. But what happens when you can have finances and you can have a lifestyle that you enjoy, that, a, a lifestyle where you can, uh, spend time with your family and your friends because when it's all said and done, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create financial freedom in our lives. That's but the bottom right. line is, is what type of freedom do you want? Do you want, do you want the type of freedom where you have to deny your kids and, and, and sacrifice your kids and your family to have success? Or you, do you want the freedom that your kids and your family can join with you? So, I take it from that standpoint. Uh, I, like I said, I, I, I personally believe you can have it all, but the bottom line is, is that we put too much, um, we put too many false expectations on ourselves when really right. we have to create small things. So it's a hobby mindset. So it's a hobby. I always tell people, uh, let your nine to five turn into your five to nine, the bottom line. I love that. Great, great, great advice. In I want to have you speak on something very quickly um, as we wrap up here soon. But there's, I, I think, out of every video that I watched of you, my favorite one by far was the one where you just talked about. I think it was like the most important thing to success, or one of them, was just surrounding yourself with people that are doing big things or further ahead than you. If, and if you're the smartest person in the room, and I think if, I know for me personally. Wherein I started because I, I was like you talked about. I was really lost in my early twenties. I wanted to be successful, and I worked hard. But everyone around me were people that looked up to me, and I didn't realize that lesson for a very, very, very long time. To just you have to put in the effort to start seeking out people that are operating on a much higher level. Can you speak to that and just how profound that is on on a success journey? You know, uh, when you, that's great. Thanks for asking that question. When you're seeking out people, learn how to seek out the right people. Mm. See, you don't have to seek out somebody because they make a million or two million dollars a year. And that's where we go wrong a lot of times. 
See, the thing is, I want to seek out the best gardener. I want to seek out the best negotiator. I want to seek out my mom. How does she do it? How does she raise the kids? See, those are the things that you want to do. You, you, you want to, you, you know, and, and, and your association is so important, which means, which means um, you want to look for the people who, you look for who you want to be a mentor for you. In other words, what I see in today's society, most people uh, are going after people just because they're popular in the That's media. Right. And I always tell people, when you're seeking out a leader or a mentor, look at their backstory more important than their front story. In other words, how did they get there? Mm, what did they do? Great to advice. Because we have a, a tendency all the time looking at where they are now. But I want to know your backstory. I want to know your backstory. So the bottom line is, is that uh, if I have, like I said, I seek the gardener, the gardener that, uh, that does the best work. And I'll ask that gardener, uh, you, know, how, you know, how do you do what you do? And that gardener can give me some, some tips on what to do. So it's not just the persons who are amassing a lot that's gonna help you. It's, 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 it's those individuals who, who have disciplined, those individuals who are committed. But I will guarantee you that if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10th. That's a guarantee. <laughs> you hang around nine, you'll be the 10th. So association is key. Always looking for, for people who are doing more, but it's all about service. It's all about service. I believe the more we decrease, the more the creator increase. So it's all about service. And in life, the only way you can't be successful, in my opinion, if you fail not to ask enough questions. So mm. the bottom line is, is that you got to open your mouth. And not only that, not only open your mouth, uh, if you go after something and if it's not receptive, Go after it again and again and again and again, because that's what it's all about. Just keep going after it. Because it's funny, because in my current book, I mean, I really wanted to meet Tony Robbins. I wanted to meet him. And uh, I kept saying to myself, I will meet him. I will meet him. Right. And what I did was I just kept doing my work, just kept doing my work, just kept doing my work. And I was given a speech one day uh, at, a, at, a, at an actual convention, and a colleague of, of his was there. And after the speech, he said, man, you said some incredible things. I love uh, what you're doing. I want some, I got somebody I want you to meet. I never knew I was going to meet him. Oh. But the bottom line is, is that, man, when, mm. I, when I tell you, like I said earlier, your passion is going to lead you to your purpose. That's right. All you have to do is, is just, uh, you know, just, just connect with your passion. Try to find your passion. Don't be afraid to fail because the bottom line is there, there's never losses. It's only lessons. And a setback is a setup for a comeback. So the bottom line is you got to just be relentless, man. You got to keep going forward, forward, forward. You don't have to be the best at what you do. You don't have to have the right people around you, the right market around you. You just got to be relentless. You just got to have an incredible work ethic and you have to be hungry. I always tell people you got to be hungry. You got to be hungry when you're pursuing your dream, when you're pursuing your purpose. And the bottom line is when you really, really um, are doing what you really, really like, You'll say it, and I'm sure you can relate to this. That's when right. you're doing what you like, you'll say, I'll do it for free. It's not work. It's not work when you, when, you, when you enjoy what you're doing. So that's what it's all about. Once you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to realize that, you know what? It was never work. That's what they told me. It was never work. What it really was about was finding me, finding what I'm good at, finding what I like to do, and I'm going to flourish in that area. Rory, I'm glad you said this because – I will be completely honest with you. I have written blogs about this. I have studied this and there's, there's just too many books out there that focus so much on like the how, like they overwhelm people with, <clears throat> you need this morning routine and work ethic and integrity and leadership. And it's just like, there's not enough books that focus on helping people find that clarity, that passion, because like, I believe, and this is just me personally, I believe that most people aren't lazy. They're just lost and confused. They're just doing, and they don't have any meaning to what they do. And therefore they have no passion for it. And therefore they don't give their all. And I just, I've seen the laziest people 
that find their why. And I mean, they have work ethic because it's not work. And I'm just so glad that you spend time here because I do so many of these interviews and everybody just, it's like, how, how, how? And it's because I think a lot of these entrepreneurs that I have on the show that I read, that I study, they, maybe they found their why early on. And so it's not something that they had to discover. And because they didn't, they expect everybody to know what they want to do. And they just talk about the how. So I'm, I'm really glad you spent some time here talking about that. And I want to finish with just a couple of questions. Um, my first question, and maybe you've already answered it, but with working with a lot of people, what do you think is the biggest thing that holds people back more than anything else? I think the biggest thing to hold people back is what they confess. Hmm. You know, you're going to have what you say. Your words are powerful. Your words are very, very powerful. When you say something, not only does people outside hear what you say, you hear what you say also, too, before you say it. And I think that uh, the battlefield of the mind is so important. You know, you, sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. But uh, right. positive words, positive af affirmations, what you consume in your mind is so important. So uh, it's nothing wrong with reading, but something more than reading is, is really not what others say about you. What do you say about yourself? What are you saying on a day-to-day -day basis? So it's really all about speaking to yourself, not focusing on what you're going through, because a lot of us are going through things. I get it. That's right. But focus on what you're going to. If you don't have anything to go to, then you're not going to get through. So the bottom line is, is that you got to let your imaginations run wild. So what I do, and just to give some listeners uh, something that will help them, yeah, I'm always creating what I want to see, and I let my imagination run with it, which means I got something to look forward to. It's just like if you knew that your wife is going to make a great meal tonight when you get home and you're out of, out of town and you're flying in. I'm going to get a great meal when I get home. You got something to look forward to. So we got to really, really uh, give ourselves something to look forward to, which means don't worry about what you're going through. But the right. bottom line is, what are you going to? And man, I, I, this, this um, time with you, man, is, uh, is incredible. And I just want to let you know that this is really, this has been one of my best interviews because I love the fact that you take the standpoint that you take because a lot of people, they're just so much caught up into the wealth and how to get rich and absolutely. all this stuff, man, when absolutely. really that's not what it's about. You're absolutely right. I mean, I go to, I went to, I was traveling um, outside of Italy, Spain, actually, and there's no hotels. There's this big convention in Madrid. And so we had to stay an hour away in this little village and is the happiest people I've ever seen in my entire life. This 100, 200 people in this village. And wow. I mean, they wake up happy. They go to bed happy. They spend all day, every day with the people they love. They don't have wealth, but they have wealth. And it's just, it was so powerful to see that because I think everybody's chasing money because of the feeling they think that it will give them. <laughs> and when they get there, they realize it's, it's, it's not the case. Man, I tell you, Roy, this has been an absolute pleasure. I, I hope to be able to get off here and schedule another one with you in the near future where we can talk about the financial side of things. But I, I think would love it, man. This is this has been great. My final question is um, how can people follow your work, stay connected with you, see what you have going on? Like where can we direct people? So because I mean your one-liners alone are worth <laughs> listening to this interview 10 times. And so I want, I know a lot of people listening are going to want to follow your work moving forward. So where, what's the best place to follow your content? They can go to uh, RoryDouglas.net, RoryDouglas.net. My firm is AquaFinancialCenter.com, AquaFinancialCenter.com. I also, uh, during time of pandemic, I'm giving free financial literacy uh, webinars also too. So they can awesome. find out exactly when I'm doing that. But uh, that's how they can actually find me. They can find all my handles, Instagram, LinkedIn, the whole nine yards. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank your listeners for taking the time to listen. And, um, you know, once again, your dreams are not a figment of your imagination. It's just showing you glimpses of your future. Stay mm -hmm. motivated and stay encouraged. I love that. Thank you so much for your time. I'll put all of your links in the show notes. And, uh, man, I can't wait to have you on again.
Thank you. And man, look, I look forward to seeing you keep doing what you're doing. Thank Don't you. let nobody stop you because this is just the beginning. It's gonna, it's gonna explode. I'm gonna let all my friends know also too. And I'm gonna put your information on, on my feed. I appreciate that.